welcome all of you, our lovely viewers and subscribers, to another exciting episode of the Health Bars show on the Big Hands TV. We are very glad that you continue to choose us and to be with us. Today, we are going to talk about another educating topic. It is going to be very exciting because our resource person is here and she is going to really discuss a lot of important things with us. But before I introduce her, I want to inform you that today we are going to talk about substance abuse. Substance abuse is something that is really of great essence to all of us as a people and a nation. Today we are going to delve so deep into it. And we are able to come your way with the Health Bass Show on Big Hands TV by the kindest courtesy of the Big Hands Foundation, which is a non-profit NGO reaching out to all persons and encouraging them that all hope is not lost for them. You can find the Big Hands Foundation on the Old Barrier Road off the Kaswa Winniba Road. And you can contact them and also share your aids and gifts with them. We are also able to come your way with this program by the kindest courtesy of Big Hands Travel and Tour. Wherever you want to go in Ghana, in and around the world, you have to get to them. Big Hands Travel and Tour, they are your best bet and they will help you with all your reservations, ticketing and what have you. Please contact the Big Hands Travel and Tour. I am your regular host and presenter and this is the Health Bars on the Big Hands TV. We are empowering all of ourselves, we are empowering people to be able to make informed decisions so as to optimize their health. We are going for a quick commercial. We'll be right back. Right, we welcome you again, our lovely viewers, to the Health Bars on Big Hands TV. And like I said before the commercial, today we are discussing substance abuse. What at all is substance abuse? What causes people to abuse substance? We are going to discuss all these questions and have their answers. And even as to how we can help people who are going through such a difficult time with substance abuse. Our resource person is in the person of Madame Linda Asamoa. She is the Deputy Director of Human Resource at the Ghana Health Service. She also has an MPhil in Public Health and she has a BSc in Nursing and Health. Psychology. Nursing and Psychology. Nursing and Psychology. We welcome you to our studios today, Madame Linda. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. It's been long, but I must say, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. And I'm highly impressed. Oh, yeah. thank you. Where you have, just after school and where you have been, you've reached in your career. I'm highly uh, impressed. Oh, thank you so much, yeah, Madam Linda. Congratulations too. Thank you. I, I would also say thank you for all the lessons back at school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At certain times, we thought the pressure was too much, but now... They are paying off. They are paying off. So thank you as well. And we are happy to have you. You are welcome. So right away, we want to talk about what substance abuse is. What is substance abuse? So that um, we can have a very good foundation, then we would move on. So what would you say about substance abuse? Um, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, let me also uh, come in. 
Thank you for inviting me and thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> when we say substance abuse, uh, I want to quote my uh, pastor, my spiritual father, <laughs> Bishop Takia Boy of Victory Bible Church. Oh, that's nice. He used to have a saying that anytime a purpose of something is not known, abuse becomes inevitable. Wow. When you don't know the purpose of something, abuse is inevitable. It means that if you know the, the actual purpose of something, it's likely that you abuse it. Okay. If you do not know. If you don't know. You don't All right. Know. And to him, everything has a purpose. Everything that God has created has a purpose. It has an aim. It has a use. But if you don't know the use, you don't know the purpose of which that thing exists. The tendency for you to abuse this, abuse it, is very high. That's so really that's insightful. Right. So when purpose is not known, abuse, yeah, abuse is, is inevitable. inevitable. Uh -huh. So when we, we say substance abuse, substance abuse is about. It's also like drug abuse, and it's uh, actually an the excessive use of the drug. Okay. Aside the intended purpose. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. there, there's excessive use. Drugs, every drug has a limit. Yeah. You have a dosage for the drug, whatever uh, condition that you are using it for. But if you use it excessively, it becomes an abuse. Okay. You understand? Yeah. And then at times, not just the uh, excessiveness. If you use it, even the method by which you should administer that particular drug, if you don't go by that way, it's also an abuse. Okay, so if mm -hmm. you are supposed to um, swallow, for instance, mm -hmm. and the oral route, mm -hmm. and then um, you choose to go by the rectal route, mm -hmm. it becomes an abuse. It's an abuse. Wow. But when we talk about abuse, we, we, we are thinking of, uh, normally we think about just uh, you taking the drug. Okay. But there are, there are so many ways, even the methods by which you take it is an abuse. Wow. Uh -huh. And then this uh, substance abuse, the excessive use, if it's also going to be detrimental to your health. Okay. Uh -huh. It's going to be detrimental. It can be that detrimental to your health, to the society. And then both. It's going to cause problems for you. When you look at uh, those who take hard drugs, you see the effect that it has on them. Let me just go by the common tra uh, tramadol that people take. <laughs> tramadol has made yes. a lot of waves. Uh -huh. Tramadol is a very uh, strong painkiller, pain reliever. It's a very good medication. Yeah. But people use it, abuse it, because they don't know. When you take it, it gives you high. <laughs> uh -huh. It gives you high. So they, they tend to take it. And then at the end, the effect that it has on them, because they don't take the normal dosage. Yeah. The excessive use. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then the effect that it has on them, it's like it's giving them even uh, mental disorders. Yeah. You see them and somebody can be in the, uh, in the mental world who says stupor. Yeah. The person can be in a certain gate or position yeah. for so many minutes or hours. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. It's detrimental to that person. Yeah. And then it can also affect society in the sense that it affects the functioning of that person. Of course. The part that you have to play in society, in society it affects it. Okay. So that is it. And it can be both you, the individual, and the society, and even your family. Because the money that the family will spend on them, on you, with that effect or that yeah. uh, uh, trauma or or the uh, abusive behavior, it also have effect on your family and uh, on your and on the society. You understand, and even the psychological trauma that it gives your family and society. Okay. <laughs> so that that is it. That is it's detrimental to yourself. Okay. And then also to the yeah, society. Thank you. Um, you have stressed on the excessive use. Would um. 
the underuse or the um, low usage of the drug also be a form of an abuse? The, or a the, form the, of abuse? Uh, the low usage can also be a form of uh, abuse. Okay. Because you are actually not using the, the drug the way it's supposed to okay. be used. You understand? Okay. And that can also be detrimental to your health too because the drug, uh, the drug can, uh, whatever condition that you are using it for, if it's for treatment of physical ailment, whatever agent, bacteria, virus, or whatever, can form, they can, they can form resistance. Yeah. Uh, so that next time when you get the same uh, condition and then you are giving the same drug, even though at that time they will, you will be giving the, the normal dosage, it, will not, it may not work because the organism has formed resistance to oh, it. Okay. Okay. So yeah. we are looking at it at mm -hmm. both sides. Mm -hmm. Excessive use and low, low usages use, or yeah. dosages. Yes. Oh, okay. So then what are some of the drugs that are commonly uh, abused? What are some of them? And when were the, the drugs... I can if any classes of drugs, yes, yeah. I, I want to categorize. Okay, them. okay, okay uh -huh. yeah. So we, we when we look at the hard drugs, we have the depressant. Okay. What we call depressant, and then the depressant when you take it, it depresses your your brain function. Okay. The way you should function as a human being, it depresses you, and it can also make you to sleep. Okay. So the common ones are the sleeping tablets. tablets. Wow. Once you can't sleep, <laughs> and a lot of us, once once a while, you have that uh, is it occurrence that there's a moment in your life that you you cannot sleep. Yeah. And then you tend to go and take it by yourself, without any pre uh, prescription, if, without even looking at the underlying factor. Yeah. You, you just understand? want to get results. You, you want you to sleep. You just want to sleep. So you go and take. The, the painkillers, they are the, the depressants. And then you, uh, even the hard drugs, cocaine and other things are also depressants. Yeah. They are both ways. They can be depressants and then they can also be uh, what we call stimulants. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you take it and then you want to, to sleep. You sleep and then you, you wake up. And then the drug like uh, barbiturate. Barbiturate, I think normally they use it in a, a mental, for mental cases. It also depresses your brain function, okay. and people tend to use it, uh, 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 abuse it a lot, because it will make you sleep. So you take it and you sleep, and you you think that you forget your problems. But unfortunately, <laughs> when you wake up, yeah, your you problems are problems. still with you. Uh -huh. So that is where the abusive behavior comes in. You wake up and the problem is still there. So yeah. you have to go and take it again, and then the feeling that it gives you. You take it and you are off. So anytime you are having that uh, uh, condition, sleeplessness, oh, let me just take it and sleep. And then you are going into that addiction. Yes. And then the uh, heroin is also one of the uh, such depressant drugs. Okay. And it also gives you that pleasurable desire. And at the end, it makes you uh, sleep off. But as you are taking it more and more, it also has an effect on you. And you can even die out of taking yeah, it. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you have the uh, stimulant. Okay. That stimulates your brain. And it makes you hyper or okay. hyper. It makes you very active. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it increases your activity uh, level. It makes you very alert. So whatever you want to do, you take it and then... You are on your. Oh, I don't know how to put it. You are up. Yeah, up like doing. up and doing. Uh -huh. Trauma door is one. Uh, <laughs> marijuana is also one. Trauma door. Uh -huh. <laughs> marijuana is also one. You take it and your your normal self. You become a different person altogether. Yeah. Yes. So they are also the the stimulant and alcohol. 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 Very alcohol well. is also it's a drug. Yeah. Alcohol is a drug. And it's also a stimulant. Viewers, so, alcohol. Uh -huh. Alcohol. This is not coming from your usual mm -hmm. Michael. No. <laughs> this is coming from a resource person. Alcohol. Mm -hmm. 
alcohol is a drug alcohol is a drug so we'll be taking it from alcohol we want you to stay tuned and be with us we are going for a quick commercial this is the health bars we'll be back shortly So we are back. This is the Health Buzz on Big Hands TV. I'm your host Michael Jamio Say, and we are in the studios with Madame Linda Samoa. She is our resource person for today. She is the Deputy Director of Human Resource at Ghana Health Service. She has an MPhil in Public Health and a BSc in Nursing and Psychology. We are, we are talking about uh, the various classes of drugs that people abuse. And the last one she mentioned before I, we went for the commercial is alcohol. So we will take it from the mm -hmm. alcohol. Yes, so alcohol is a stimulant, it's a drug. A stimulant, it stimulates your brain activity. Mm -hmm. And it makes, uh, increase your activity level. Okay. So you realize that on a normal day, somebody who is very uh, quiet, shy looking, <laughs> the moment you take alcohol, you can stand up and then you tell people your mind. Yeah. So you go to the villages and then they call it uh, Amferewasi. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Kikebiche so, Wasi. They have so many <laughs> names for it because once... Oh, you, uh, in-laws. <laughs> yes. Once you take it, you become a different person altogether. It, it, it helps you. you. You become stimulated and then you do whatever you want to do. Marijuana is also one of them. Oh, okay. Marijuana is also one of them. Oh, okay. You, you, you take it and then you, you, are also, you also become hyper. Okay. And you can do things which is outside your normal self. Yeah. And people yeah. are standing will think that, ah, is it Michael we know? Is it oh. Linda we know? You see. Uh -huh. All so right. These are the stimulants. Cocaine is also one. And then you have, as usual, the tramadol is also tramadol. one. Tramadol. Tramadol catapults. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a very good drug. Yeah, yeah. At the hospital, we use it. It's yeah. abuse. is very, very dangerous. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very dangerous. All right. And then you have uh, you have what you call the hallucinogens. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, it, what do you mean it, with it that? It's, it stems from what we call hallucination. Hallucinogens. Would you explain more? They, also, they distort your brain function. Okay. In fact, all these drugs distort your brain function. But the hallucinogens gives you a false feeling. Okay. Or a false perception. What is not there, you feel is there. What is not there, you feel is there. Okay. Who you are not, you think you, you think are. You think you are. And then you behave. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then you, you, be, you behave uh, uh, aside. You see, hallucin uh, when you say hallucination, you'll be seeing things which are not uh, natural. Okay. Or do not exist. exist. And then it, it also influences the way you behave. Wow. That is why at times you see people walking. And then they are there and fighting with maybe bears mm. on the tree, talking to them. And they ah, you would ah, but this man, is this woman, this man correct? In his brains, he's seeing them and they are talking to him. And that informs his behavior. You understand? And it also makes you become paranoid. When we say paranoid, you don't, you are suspicious, yeah. you can't suspicious of people. Yeah. You don't want and to I, trust anyone. Exactly. And at times you, you think that people are in to, be, uh, to, to harm you. <laughs> so because of that, when they give you even water, you won't drink. You don't want to drink water because they have poisoned yeah. the water. 
uh, they want to to kill you so you want to disguise yourself when you are going out <laughs> it's, it's so interesting wow this yes. is very interesting uh -huh. this thing, yes all these things are happening in your mind and then it's also uh, because you are hallucinating it's it's uh, sort of influence the way you behave so okay. if you think that you have to disguise yourself then what do you do either you are high you go and always you want to go and hide somewhere be in your room you don't even want to come out or even when you are coming out what are some of the dresses i can wear so that you won't see that that is linda going okay because there's there are people out there to harm me okay mm -hmm. so the, that's that is what the hallucinogens does to you and then there are the drugs are, you have still, you have the cocaine. Okay. You have the marijuana. You have what you call the opiates. The, yeah. Some of the strong painkillers, the morphines. When you take it excessively, that is what it does to you. And then wow. the uh, asuja, our uh, trauma. <laughs> uh, trauma no fans. <laughs> you see those who take trauma though, you see them and they can be in a certain position yeah. for uh, uh, some minutes and they are there. They are just standing, or if they are squatting, they are squatting. And that is a stupor position. So their brains are, uh, are being distorted. Mm. And they, they feel that they should be in that position for reasons best known to them. For some time, the next time when you go, you will not even see them again. Do you understand? And then even on the social media, you will see one, once a while, you see a video of somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. diving into a, a, a bowl of water. Yeah. In his mind, that is a, a, a whole pool. swimming pool. And then you want to dive in it. And in doing that, you may break his neck wow. or something. So that is the hallucinogens. And they, they, they are, there are so many drugs that form that. The marijuana, what you call the ecstasy. I don't know whether we have ecstasy drug in Ghana. In we the would Western, have to check. Uh -huh. I think those who go to the pub, mm -hmm. who go to the club, I think they, they may they may have seen it. Oh okay. Uh -huh. So normally those it helps you though you can dance the whole night, do whatever you <laughs> <laughs> you want to do. You you, you hide behind the uh, ecstasy, and, but the, it's very fatal. Wow. Because you can just be in that hyperactivity and just collapse. Wow. And and, and that is it. And then you have the LSD. It's also common in the Western world. I think this still, those who go to the clubs, they may be there. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then the, the women who visit the clubs, that is what people use to rape them. They can just put it... I would them. like you to uh, really they can, they can just echo put that. It, the LSD, they can just put it in your drink mm. or your water. And then you drink, you dance, dance, and then... You don't have control over yourself oh. again. Then whatever they want to, to do, do to you. they will do it to you. If you are not lucky, you may not even... The effect of the drug, you may not even wake up. You will die in your sleep. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. And it kills them. It also uh, makes them high. That is why somebody can go and stand on top of a story building and feel that I can fly. I believe I can uh -huh. fly. I believe I can fly. And jump to his <laughs> or her death. So these wow. are... They are, they are, they are serious... Uh, dangerous drugs but i'm sure they have a, a purpose there's a good purpose why they, they exist and because sure. you don't know the purpose like you said in your we intro are, yes that where is purpose is not known abuse is abuse inevitable, is inevitable. Oh, so that's very extensive mm. on the yeah. drugs on so the at what point okay let me pick it from this side when we go to the hospitals mm -hmm. or even at um, the pharmacies for maybe to buy a prescribed drug and um, we take the drugs home or at the hospital at what point would drug or the substance abuse incident come in at what point after we have um, bought the drugs at what point yes yeah, some some prescription drugs can also be abusive okay you buy maybe at this time I've been to the uh, hospital, they have prescribed the medication for me. For example, there's this medication called pethidine. <laughs> pethidine is a strong and very uh, potent painkiller. In fact, the first time I was given pethidine is when I had my first child. Oh. I went through uh, CS. Even though I had learned about it in the uh, 
at school. Mm -hmm. And after the CS, I was having uh, some pains, very, very incisional pain. It was very, very severe. So the doctor, the uh, obstetrician, asked the nurses to give me pethidin. And oh, wow. It suits your pain. Ah. <laughs> within within, a, <laughs> within a, a twinkle of an eye, the pain, I couldn't feel the pain. And I, the feeling was so, well, so relieving, <laughs> relieving, and I, you know. So I said, ah. They didn't tell me initially. So later, I called the nurse and I asked the nurse, ah, what, what uh, drug did you, uh, the injection that you gave me, what drug was that? And then says she knows that I'm a nurse, so she said, Petidin. I said, wow. So this is how Petidin works. All right. <laughs> so the next time, my second uh, delivery. delivery, still true cesarean. So that one too, after the, the operation, I was having uh, pains. But then, the same, uh, <laughs> the same was the tradition. But this time, he didn't want to. The yeah. nurse didn't want to, but I, it was uh, the pain I was going through. So I myself called one of the nurse and asked that, ah, don't you have pain? <laughs> <laughs> Please. So when I requested, then they gave me. Okay. And that is it. But since then, I haven't taken. So having taken pain and knowing the, the soothing effect that it has on you, if you go and then they, they give you, because it's a prescription drug, they give it to you and then you go and take it. And maybe it didn't get finished or you know the way we, we do our things and or you have some day. The next time you are going through that experience, the tendency for you to go for it is there. It's high. Okay. And like I'm saying it, I can also recommend it to somebody. Yeah. And that is where the abuse com comes in. It could be that the condition that I'm recommending may no need pethidine. Of course. Uh -huh. mm. So that, 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 that is it. And then uh -huh. I would quickly want to ask this. Um, is this saying very true that some particular drugs work um, best or better with other people than others? Oh, yes. That is why we have what we call contraindications. Indications. You understand? Every drug will have what you call indication. Indication means that you can use this drug for such and such diseases or conditions. And then the contraindications will tell you that maybe if you are pregnant, don't use. You are now. You know that if you are a child below this age, don't use. If you have this condition, don't use. You understand? Yeah. So if you are among those that is contraindicated, then it means that drug may not be good for you. So it's true. It's yes, others, some drugs are good for others, but they are also not good for others. other people. And then when you, you take it, you can react to it. And some of the reaction can be very, very uh, dangerous or detrimental. Okay. Uh, I, uh, let me take you back to this <laughs> common drug, aspirin. Okay. Aspirin has a very serious uh, effect. Mm -hmm. we call, they call it uh, Stephen Johnson's syndrome. Mm -hmm. So in our school days, I was assigned to ENT, Kolibu, the ENT ward. And then we met this lady. She used to be uh, a news broadcaster okay. at the uh, GBC. She was an, on admission. We thought she uh, was having a Benz. There were blisters all over her face, her body, and then she was drooling. She couldn't close the mouth. The mouth were all sore. So we took the folder and then we read. No knowing, she was reacting to aspirin. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that, that one can even constrict your, your, uh, is it your vessels that lead to the esophagus or whatever, your windpipe. Oh, OK. Uh -huh. And you can die. So that is it. You, you, but aspirin is a common drug. Yeah, that it's we a take, common drug that we take, and when people happens. feel they have pain, exactly. When you have pain, you take it, but it may be contraindicated to you, and then you may go through some of this uh, reaction. So that is why at times you, or not at times, always you need to read 
before you take before any you take, drug. Even if they prescribe it for you, you need to take. You need to read and see whether it will, it is good for you or not. Okay. Um. Uh, recently, I mean, the news goes about the youth, the youth, the youth. They are abusing drugs. They are doing that. They are doing that. Is there a particular group of people who are major substance abusers? Do we have? Yes, yes, we have. Because and if, if we have, sorry to cut you, but I'm like that. If we have, what are their reasons? Well, what are their reasons? Because they usually we have suffered. <laughs> yes. Especially those of us who are interested in growing beard. If you, if you are going there. Anyway, this is an interesting uh, <laughs> side of it. Yeah. Yes, you, we have a, a group of people or age group within which abuse is very okay. uh, 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 is, it's happening. And as you said, they are the youth. When I, I did, I was researching, I, I got to know that we have about 190 million uh, drug abusers in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And most of them fall within the ages below 30 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the youth, <laughs> the youth, that is where, because you want to explore curiosity. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we'll, we'll link it to the causes of abuse. All right. So then let's, let's, co let's yes. come to that point. Causes of causes substance of abuse. Causes of substance abuse. You realize that uh, peer pressure is very key. Okay. And then uh, at your youthful age, that is where you have a lot of uh, peer, the peer pressure is very strong. You want to associate. You want to belong to, to a group. You want to uh, feel belong. Sorry to mm -hmm. cut you. Peer pressure. Peer pressure. Can peer pressure be positive? Can peer pressure be negative? Sorry to yes, cut you. Yes, it can be positive. So take it from both sides for it us to see. It can be positive and it can be negative. They, 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 uh, still, I will want to go back to the Bible and, and quote. That's very good. That Bible says that uh, evil communication. You know me, I, li I, I like King James, so <laughs> I use the King James one. Evil communication corrupts good, good, character. Uh, good character or good morals. And then in uh, Akan, we have, they have a problem that says that. <laughs> You know, you show me your friends, I'll and then I will tell character. you your character. So that is how the peer pressure works, negatively and then positively. You, you, be, you can be part of a group that have a positive effect on you. You inspire each other. You learn from your group. That is why as parents, we have to make sure that we have to know the people that our children associate with. Let them bring their friends to the house, be part of their friends. If possible, be also be a friend to their friends. Mommy, can you take that part again? Parents, <laughs> parents, yes. parents. Uh -huh. So, so parents, we need to know where and where our friends, uh, our children go. Who are, are the, our fr who are their friends? How are they like? Their friends, who are their parents? You understand? So if you know who your friend, your children friends are, you 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 bring them on board. If possible, let them come home. Me at a point, my house was even when they were kids, my house was a, like a nursery. <laughs> you come and all the children in the area yeah, are in the, in the in the house. At times you come and they are even my computer class I work with. That is where they are playing game with. Wow. And some can even uh, corrupt it. But what can I say? So that, that is it. You bring them, and then their friends has a lot of influence on them. There are certain things that they learn from their, their yeah, peers. Yeah, they don't learn from us. Even when you look at us now, parenting, by 5, five that you are out of the house. What happens when you are away? On the social media, who are the groups that your children associate with? What are the information that they are, they are having? And this can have a, neg a negative or positive effect on them. I remember recently when the, uh, this free education, the first white SS people, when they graduated. So my girl was in the house, and then she was, I don't know, she's made herself like a coordinator. 
So she was coordinating her friends, calling, which school have you, the admission, where have you reached? Have you gotten leg? As they, they term it, our time we say leg one, but now they say leg. So are you in leg or tag or whatever it is? Then those who don't have anywhere, then she will tell you, oh, their private schools are there. She, she is in a centra. So she was trying to even convince others to come to centra. And that's oh, they, a positive uh -huh, influence. That is a positive influence. You understand? But there are other friends that you associate with, and then they will also send you over the... Uh, uh, they will send you into ditch. <laughs> so they, they, they influence them. You associate with them. They, when you are so you can't say that you will not be like them. Yeah, yeah of course, of yes. course. Yes, initially maybe you go and they are doing this drug thing. You want to, you will not be part of it. But with time, you will be taking you will be taking small. it small, small. Oh, this one you just taste. And these drugs are very addictive. The moment you take the first time, you will continue to take it to avoid the withdrawal symptoms. So yes, peer group can have positive and negative So what's the, what are other causes of substance abuse? Then you have, uh, I was on the uh, family, uh, the PS. Yeah. Then you have what we call the family history. Okay. In the home. Wow, family You history. have, uh, yes, chaotic environment at home. Okay. There's no peace at home. Maybe your, your parents, mother, father, they are either fighting or at the verge of divorce. So everybody is, your mother is not happy, your father is not happy. Father goes and doesn't come. And mother is moody, does, is not bothered about what goes on in your life. Then you have this group around, a subgroup around. You go out and then you join them. And that is what lures you into yeah. this uh, uh, abuse or addiction. So the family is very key, parenting ineffective parenting like example i gave you now parents we, we want money so we go, <laughs> <laughs> we go out and it's like oh, if i'm able to provide money. for your physical needs pay your school fees what that's, else do i need? Okay. You, you don't even know your your children there is only a quota mm -hmm. of it you don't know your children that is ineffective parenting and that pushes the the young ones into some of these drug, uh, drugs because nobody cares about you in the house. So what do you do? You find solace. Yeah. You take the, the drug and then you hide yourself or you sleep. And that is it. So parenting is very key. Ineffective parenting mm -hmm. is a cause. And still on parenting, lack of <laughs> nature. <laughs> okay. Providing for your, your children. So if you have a friend, who can give you all that you need? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be closer to that friend. Meanwhile, that friend could be, the, 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 could be in this addiction issue. And because the friend provides everything yeah. for you, yeah. when he wants you to invite you, yeah. you can't say no. Yeah, it will be very so difficult. It will be very difficult. And then the parental attachment, do we know our children? We don't know our children. Hmm. Some of us, our children are in school. When was the last time we even called them to find out what they are doing or where they are at a particular point in time? Are they closer to you that they can just barge in into your, your room and come and sit down and talk to you? Or can you also go into their room and then you talk to them anyhow? Me in my house, they come at any, any time. At times when they come, I say, you people, go to your room. Why? You don't even knock, then you are entering. <laughs> Meanwhile, when I want to come to your room, hey, then you, mommy, you have ah, to knock. You see, <laughs> but you, you need to, they have to be attached to them. They have to also be attached to you. Find out, prowl into your privacy. What are their, their fears? What are their worries? They will tell you, they have a lot to, to tell you, but if you leave them alone, then the peers come in, and then the subgroup comes in. There are parents that they even sack their children from school, dismiss them, and then they, they, they in fact, it becomes a surprise to them that their parents, be, uh, their children behave the way they do in school. Because mm, you don't know you them. You don't know them. In the house, there are different persons all together. We have all been there. Exactly. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, so Madame so it's, that one is also a cause. And the parents themselves, they themselves, are, some of them are 
into drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Health Bars on Big Hands TV. I am your regular host and presenter, Michael Jamiose. We are discussing substance abuse. And today we have in our studios, Madame Linda Samoa. And she is the Deputy Director of Human Resource at Ghana Health Service. She also has an MPhil in Public Health and a BSc in Nursing and Psychology. We are discussing substance abuse and we are talking about the causes. We have mentioned family history. That is so, so interesting. Family history as a precipitating cause or a factor to consider when you are talking about substance abuse. So we'll continue, Madam Linda. So the, the family history is key. Especially in the alcohol, those who abuse alcohol. At times, mommy, daddy drinks. And at times, they even send you the, the boy, the girl to go and buy, go to the next, the dance door, maybe there's a, a, a beer bar or something, go and buy this for me. <laughs> and then the child will also go and buy. And when you come, at times, you know, they, they think it's a fun. It will taste small. Very well. I would like to ask this. What, what would you say about parents mm -hmm. who are vendors of alcohol? Yes. What would you say? I mean, is there any, um, for the want of a right word, is there any courteous way they can do their business? Because since you are in the house, your children are seeing... Oh, is that about that, madam? Since you are a mother, yes, yes. <laughs> this one too. It reminds me when we were growing up, and then we joined the Scripture Union. Mm -hmm. In fact, this question was a question we used to ask because right from there we were made to know that uh, alcohol, drinking alcohol, is a sin. Yeah. So, if you know now you are a Christian, and then you know that drinking alcohol is a sin. And then your parents sell alcohol, mm -hmm. or you yourself, you work in a, a place that you, you sell alcohol to people. So what do you do? That was the question we used to ask ourselves. And some will say that I will stop and all that. So what you are saying, you realize that you yourself, you know it's no good. But you are selling to people to destroy their lives. Hmm. So what about finding another job? another something else to sell it's about bringing in income that is your source of uh, yeah. income or daily bread in the house can you have something else to sell in the same shop you understand yeah instead of selling that uh, alcoholic Alcohol. beverage if it's a cigarette, those cigarette things. and other things can you have something else to sell because in selling the children in the house, at times, when you are asleep, they go and steal in. in yeah, yeah. Want they to may taste. want to, yeah. They want to taste and also know the feeling. Why people drink, why people smoke. Uh, those who come and smoke and then they puff it in, the way they are feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the yeah. children, are, they are curious. So then let me also see if I can also have the same or similar feeling. And that also lures them into it. So if we can get, nowadays people buy uh, a lot of these non-alcoholic drinks. So what about yeah, yeah. selling them or turning your, your shop into a, a provision shop? I think if you can do that, that will also help. Right. That's very insightful. So you were to telling us about the causes of the causes. substance uh -huh. abuse. So the, the parents taking it is also children observe and behave or practice what they see. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you're a parent and then you are also a drug user or abuser, know that your children, not all, maybe one of them will also become like you. So it's better you stop it. Then we have other factors like being a male. Hey, being males. a male is very key. My friends, are you there? Yeah. Males. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that women don't abuse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Women also abuse. We also have, uh, when you look at the steroids, yeah. the drug, there's amitazone. Yeah. Women tend to abuse yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because when you take it, you, you bloat, you become yeah. nice looking, and you grow fat and all that. So that is what they use to, to is it boost their 
fatness. Yeah, and their mm -hmm. physical uh -huh. appearance. Physical okay. appearance. And so they abuse the steroids. Some even take marijuana and other things. But research have shown that men yeah. used to take it. They take it more than women. So being a male is also a risk factor. Wow. A male a child growing up, a teenage boy growing up. These are some of the, the, the problems that they also engage. Drug addiction or making drug is also key. So being a male is also a, a, a risk factor to drug abuse. And then uh, those who have attention deficit. Okay. Children that have attention deficit. It means that they don't get enough attention at home as they should have. So that is why I said then they will tend to join the subgroup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't have attention, they leave you in the house and then they go. When at times, when daddy comes, you are even asleep. When <laughs> mommy comes, you are even asleep. They leave early, they leave money on the table, they are gone. So you, you join your boys' voice and that can also lure you into, into this, uh, some of these uh, bad behaviors. Then those who have mood disorders, at times you are that shy looking, very quiet, introvert, you want to keep to yourself. You live in isolation. So these are the drugs, who, who, you would think that the drugs will make you be more happy yourself. You don't want to associate with any, anybody. And then those who are hyper, you, everybody is your friend. So you can also run into uh, groups that are abuses. So it's both way. Those who are hyper aggressive, and then those who those are, are shy. The introverts. The introvert. The introverts, when they are doing drugs, it's even difficult for you to notice because yeah. you think that they are. That is how they are. But you don't know. You it may be that is the drug is also adding to their behavior making them more secluded. Uh -huh. So that is it. And then the antisocials, the antisocial personality disorder. They don't want to be part of any uh, social activities. Why that? Such people, you have to watch them carefully. Yes, when everybody is going, you alone, you decide to stay at home. So what, what makes behind. you happy? What makes you have a uh, pleasure? Possibly drugs. Uh -huh. So this, we, we also need to look at them. And then those who have, uh, we talk about childhood socialization, okay. bringing children up. How do you socialize your, your children? Those who have bad behavior. I remember growing up, we used to have about four, uh, there were three guys in that area, very, very notorious. Every animal, chicken, they are killing them and throwing <laughs> stones at people. Wow. Uh -huh. So such people, it's so easy for them to go into drugs to boost their behavior. Uh -huh. In a pro oh. poor performance. Academics. Academics can lead you into. Because we take drugs to be able to perform. Uh, to yeah. be able to stay overnight and learn. <laughs> This yes. one, this one, I'm not in that. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, when, yeah, I, when I'm smiling like that. Yes, uh-huh. You know, I, I remember when we were in a sex form. We did sex form. We didn't do this, your SS. Yeah, yeah. We did sex form. So, and then in a, a school, where I think, and then we do the term, not the semester. So the third term, I think that uh, when they, we stay, when they, they vacate, we stay and then we write the exams. So we're staying. Then the news came about that, hey, there's this drug. They used to call it uh -huh, purple rather, not red, purple. And I, for up to now, I don't know what kind of drug that purple was. <laughs> purple. Even in my uh, nursing. I haven't heard of any pe name yeah, called purple. Yeah, but there was a, a, a tablet with that they call purple. And they said, purple, when you take purple, you can stay overnight. And then you ghost. Yeah, yeah. You, you people called it ghosting. We, we used to call it ghosting. Oh, we used to call it mining at purple. Uh -huh. So, mining. ghosting. So, you want to ghost, you take purple and you can stay overnight and you learn. 
So people were taking it. So me and my friend, Claudette, <laughs> they would say, ah. Claudette came and said, ah. Linda, they say there's this dragon because we're scared of the exams. You can take it and you won't be able to sleep. You stay awake. Say, eh, okay. Then let's try it tonight and see. So somebody brought some from the house and we took it. Oh, for two days, in fact, for two days I couldn't sleep. Really? I'm telling you. 48 hours. 48 hours I couldn't sleep. I had wow. to throw the, this thing, the medicine away. And those who even could sleep, when they woke up, like tonight, you will not be able to sleep. You learn. Uh, when you wake up the following day, you have forgotten all that. And to, to what effect was uh -huh. they? <laughs> so, the poor academic performance. So, you take drugs to steady. And in doing that, you keep taking it. And it, it becomes part of you. The moment you stop it, you, you can't do much. So that becomes addictive and you start abusing. And I'm sure that drug, I don't think the purpose was that you take yeah, a drug yeah, and you yeah. should not sleep. Yeah. Why would you do that? Uh -huh. it's, also, it's also key. And then joining the deviant group, we've talked about that yeah. extensively. Then groups. And then there's also perception that there's okay. approval for drug use. Okay. People think they perceive you know, and they think in their mind that well, even when you do drug that yeah. it's you they don't do anything. Some it's, time it's, ago people were saying mm -hmm. the government should legalize marijuana. Uh huh. Because it has a medicinal uh, purpose. Them. We have a lot of drugs at the hospital, we've not finished uh -huh. using them. So that perception also pushes people to do drugs. Mm. Because it's, it's approved. We have approval. Okay. They think they have approval for those drugs and then they keep taking it. Wow. And whilst you are taking it, you become uh, addicted. You are abusing it and then you also become addicted to, okay. to it. So perception, so, mm -hmm. um, irresponsible parenting, mm -hmm. peer pressure in the negative um, aspect are uh, among some of the reasons for people to abuse substances. So, um, Madam Linda has extensively placed a demand on parents mm -hmm. that parents should get to know the awards and even the friends of the awards. Mm -hmm. This is the Health Bars on Big Hands TV. I am your host, Michael. We are in the studios today. We are talking about substance abuse. And I believe... Thus far, you've really learned a lot. We are coming your way with the program by the kindest courtesy of Big Hands Foundation and Big Hands Travel and Tour. We are going for a quick commercial. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. We welcome all of you, our lovely viewers. This is the Health Bars. On Big Hands TV, we are educating ourselves. We are optimizing our health through the decisions we are making concerning our health and measures to help us live longer and live more healthy. We are talking about substance abuse. And we have known that where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Now, we want to talk about what we would see. How would we be able to tell that this person or this group of people are abusing substances? Yeah. Things that will make you know that somebody is on track. I think the first one I have is uh, giving up activities. Somebody okay. who is always active, then suddenly you see the person withdrawn. Maybe the person is a sports person. Now does not show interest in the sport. In sport. He doesn't want to go out with friends. He doesn't want to do anything associated, neglect family members and all that. The normal activities that the person enjoys doing, now that person is not doing it again. For no reason. You should suspect that something is, is happening on the other side. And then uh, poor academic or declining academic performance. Okay. The person is good at school, then suddenly the performance is getting 
or becoming very bad or low, 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 low. You should suspect. Maybe that person is not, even you think that the person is at school. For all you know, the person is not even in class. You go to school and it's not in class. No, my <laughs> my senior boy, that your your schoolmate. Yeah, from Per College. From Per College. He was telling me that he had their year batch, he had a friend. Ah, first term, the, the guy was good. Then now you don't even see him uh, uh, in class. They used to have a name for him. Now he goes about the lady selling. And they are, sell, they are sending him up and down. You go and fetch water for them and all those things. In, you know, on campus, so that's the, the parents have seen him off to go to school. school. No meaning a, a school to Prempe College. Oh. And then he goes and be running errands for, for, people. for, for sellers. <laughs> Uh -huh. So these are some of the, of the things, and then it will eventually affect your yeah, academic yeah, performance yeah. because when you hang out with groups, the subgroups or subculture, that is how I call them. Obviously, your performance will also be affected. If if you take sedative and sleep, would you would you come <laughs> and learn? No if case. you go and take a uh, marijuana, and then you become high. Even when you look on the book, you see, you'll be seeing things. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be seeing it, the, the, the writings or whatever in a different thing, way altogether. And you will not be able to concentrate, and that will affect your performance. So if you have a child who, is, who used to like academic work or, and now is just becoming something, you should find out. You have to investigate what is happening. And then they also become aggressive. On the normal day, a person who is not aggressive, when the person takes the drugs, it become, that person becomes a, aggressive and irritable, especially when they are going into that withdrawal symptoms, when they need a drug and they are not getting it. They, they become very aggressive, very irritable. It's something small than they are mm -hmm. on the verge. So, but if you know that a, in a normal life, that is not how that person behaves you should also suspect. And then you have uh, changes in mood and behavior. Okay. I am the quiet type. And now I'm all over the place. Talking. Every, every uh, issue, then you see me in. Or I am that happy-go-lucky. But now I, am, I have withdrawn. You see me and even I, I, I don't bath of late. <laughs> I look very unkempt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you, you should suspect. I'm quiet. I want to keep to myself. But on a normal day, that is not how I am. You, you, should, you should find out if you're a parent and you have a child like that. You should prowl into that child's life, find out what is happening. It could be that that person is on drugs. And then uh, suddenly things are getting... The, uh, is it disappearing from your house? Money. You put money there, the next time you come, it's not there. You put your phone there, the next time you come, it's not there. Meanwhile, you don't have any stranger in the house. There could be that somebody is on drug day, and that person needs money to go and buy yeah, yeah, a drug. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that small, small pilfering in the house, things getting missing. You should, you should check. If you don't check, you're valuable. Big things will start getting. Plus, a, 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 a friend of my mom, she used to be a tutor at uh, Kolebu NMTC. He had a, a son. And the son went to Achmota school. Oh, okay. And then came out to be a drag. Oh. To be on drag. So one day, while the mother was in school teaching, then he had a, she had a call from the neighbors that, hey, Somebody is ripping off your roof. She came home and no knowing her son. They've ripped off the uh, the, uh, this, uh, the roof, broken into the ceiling, into her bedroom, and then took things out to go and sell and use it to buy the drugs. So this is how far the extent that at times they can they can go. And it, it, it becomes very uh, difficult to control them if you don't check from the beginning. 
then a uh, feeling of helplessness okay worthlessness or helplessness yeah yeah why am i here what is my worth and the moment that feeling comes in depression has set in and if you don't take a then suicidal tendency is also coming. Yeah. Because if you, you think that you are nobody, why are you here? Yeah. Then the next moment you are thinking of, then I should, I should yeah, leave. Yeah, I should kill myself. I should kill myself. So you have somebody who is hopeless, hopelessness. I think I, I don't have anything to offer. And normally you see them and they become very quiet, who don't want to have anything to do with, with you. Or anybody, especially when you have other siblings who are not like him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe it could be that he is the eldest, but because of the drug that he's doing, his life is somehow. And then the younger ones are rather moving, moving or flying high, and their attention is are on the younger ones. Then me, why am I here? You understand? Uh -huh. So you see them. Normally, that person is not withdrawn. But now the person is withdrawing from social activities, from family and life and other things. Then you, you, sh you have to be uh, alert. You have to be on the lookout for them. And they are also selfish. Everything is about me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Those on drugs, they are, they are selfish. Everything wow, is about me. that's quite them. interesting. Oh, yes. That is why they don't care coming to take everything mm. from here. Go and sell and buy the drugs. They will do all they it do takes. All that it takes just to get it. And everything is about me. If my mother, my mother's money, I can take my uh, siblings' phones, I can just take and go and sell. Whatever uh, mechanism or systems that we need to put in place, we have to do a lot of education. That's okay. we are doing. We should do a lot of uh, awareness creation so that it will deter people from abusing these substances. You understand? And then we have rehabilitation centers. Okay. We, if somebody gets into it, when you go to the mental hospitals, it's unfortunate it's within the mental hospital. Mm. But you go there, they have rehabilitation centers, uh, places for them. So would you recommend rehabilitation centers as spread out across the country? Yes, I, w I think we should have uh, something like that. Like we have for those who get uh, the victims of uh, gender violence. Okay. Even though we don't have plain enough, now it, I think it's private individuals that are doing that. Okay. They have what we call shelters. Okay. So if we can help have shelters in the, the rehabilitation, but we, we can name it shelters for these uh, drug addicts or drug abusers. And then over there, we give them the support that they need. They need all that we need to, the support that they need so that they can be wean off those drugs and then they can perform effectively in society. We, we should create thing, uh, centers like that. And the government should come in, the ministry should come in, and then even private individuals should also come in so that we create a lot of uh, rehabilitation centers for these uh, unfortunate ones. And then we have uh, counseling. And then self-help, <coughs> what we call self-help groups. Okay. We have the example is the uh, Alcoholic Anonymous group. And you say, what? The, if you have, sorry. <laughs> I don't know whether you've heard of it. And then the Narcotic Anonymous group. Okay. It, it is a group where it's part of the rehabilitation. And uh, they have a uh, reach. Do they have one? Within the Ghana Health Service, we have uh, those that work with the uh, what do we... Uh, I think it will come up as you go along. Yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've forgotten. It falls within, within that uh, occupational health uh, groups. groups. Oh, okay. Occupational health directorates okay. within the Ghana Health Service. They deal with uh, this group, the uh, uh, addiction people or the addicts. So they have this alcoholic anonymous group. You don't know me, I don't know you, but we are all alcoholics. And then we, we share, I think they've created a platform or whatever. And then you share experiences. You share information. And that also helps a lot. And then social workers can also come in. Come in. And then you can, they can visit, do home visiting. And 
you they visit people that have these problems, challenges, and then they help them out of, uh, give them enough uh, counseling and then support. Then you can also have peer counselors. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's like the anonymous group, peer counselors, or you, they look at your age and then they bring uh, somebody that is about your age and then the person talks you out of the out of situation. This, out of the situation. Okay. So if we have this, ooh, then the family, the family, we have to also be supportive. If you have an addict in your family, don't neglect the person. They are troublesome. They are nuisance to you. <laughs> and then uh, they also cast stigma to you as a family. Oh, but me, we look at the, the child. You know, oh, we need background our bottom. It's, they, they bring stigma and shame to you. But you have to also support them. You'll be strong as a family. And then you, you give them the needed support that you have to give them. At times, I think some even say that there are medications that, especially the alcoholic, they can give it to you and it will deter you from. Yeah, yeah there's this. a drug like that. Uh -huh. It's an there's anti -abuse. A, there's a, a drug like that. Yeah. So I think this is, these are the ways that we can. Uh, okay. So that is very extensive <laughs> on the management of substance abuse. We started with preventive measures. And the key thing with prevention is very effective education. This is the Health Bars on Big Hands TV. We have come your way with another exciting edition and episode. Today we have discussed substance abuse. Please like, share, follow, and subscribe to our channel on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Please like, subscribe our channel to our channel and do all the sharing um, on YouTube as well. We are wrapping up and before we do that, we would like to take the final words from our resource person today. She is Madame Linda Samoa the Deputy Director of Human Resource at the Ghana Health Service. She has an MPhil in Public Health and also a BSc in Nursing and Psychology. Your last words to our viewers, I'd like you to pay particular attention to the um, camera. And if you have any regrets, you give as well. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Welcome. My uh, final comment is that substance abuse as a nation, as a people, we have to do everything in our powers to prevent our children and future leaders from going into it because it has a dangerous effect, it has a, de a detrimental effect on our children, on us even as parents and family and also as a society and even for our community. There are lots of things that we can do to support children that are abusive or they tend to be addictive to some of these hard drugs. We can support them, we cancel them. But as parents, my last word is that we have to be interested in what our children do. Our youth, we have to be interested in what they do. Let them be our friend. Let them be our friends. Let their friends also be our friends. We should know where they are at any particular point in, t in time. Even though we need the money to, to take care of them. <laughs> but if they are not there, the money that you have is nothing. It's because of them that is why we are, we are struggling, we are hustling. So let's be interested in them so that, as Michael said, prevention is key. So that we'll be able to prevent our children from becoming or uh, addictive or from abusing drugs. And even we ourselves as parents, we have to be a guide against abusing some of these drugs. And whatever we do in the house, our children are there to copy from us. Thank you, viewers. Thank you so much, um, Madam Linda Samoa. We are very happy to have had you in our studios today. So all too soon, viewers, we are coming to the end of today's edition. This has been the Health Buzz on Big Hands TV. Today we discussed substance abuse. 
And before we leave, we would like to remind you again that we are able to come your way by this kind of sketchy of the Big Hands Foundation, which is an NGO reaching out to all persons who are facing all sorts of challenges, telling them that hope is not lost for them at all. We are also able to come your way by the kind of courtesy of the Big Hands Travel and Tour. You want to move around the world, you want to move around Ghana, they are your best bet. I have been your regular host and presenter, Michael Jamil Say. Today I was joined in the studios by my mother and my lecturer. Before I leave, I would like to give my regards to Mrs. Jeanette Ansadanso, who is an SNO at 37 Military Hospital, the Ops and Gaini Unit, and to my Papa in the Lord, Reverend Spixkate. I salute you, Papa. This has been another educating episode of the Big Hands TV Health Buzz. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next week, God willing.